Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. We are talking about midbrain. When we talk about midbrain, midbrain is also known as mesencephalon. Midbrain includes two important parts. The first part is corpora quadrigemina and the second important part is crura cerebri. When we talk about the corpora quadrigemina, the other name given to the corpora quadrigemina is colliculi. There are two pairs of lobes present here in dorsal thick wall of the midbrain. So colliculi is nothing but corpora quadrigemina which are present in two pair. Now when I say two pair, it is superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. So there are two pairs of lobes present in the dorsal thick wall of the midbrain. When we talk about the superior colliculi, the two is superior colliculi that forms the one pair. The other two is the inferior colliculi which forms the two pairs. Superior colliculi is responsible for head movement that is with respect to sight and vision. Inferior colliculi is with respect to ear movement. So it is responsible for auditory and hearing. When we talk about the crura cerebri, crura cerebri is the another part of the midbrain and it is also known as cerebral peduncle. Now the point here is what do you mean by this cerebral peduncle? So when I say cerebral peduncle, basically it's like a stalk that will connect different parts of the brain. So let's talk about cerebral peduncle. It contains fibers which connects different parts of the brain like the cerebrum, cerebellum and the spinal cord. So the most important role or the function of crura cerebri is to connect brain and spinal cord. After this midbrain, we are going to have the hind brain. So function of crura cerebri is to connect the brain and the spinal cord. When we talk about hind brain, hind brain is also known as rhombencephalon. Why it is called as rhombencephalon? Because the shape appears somewhat like rhombus. Therefore, hindbrain is known as rhombencephalon. Hindbrain consists of three parts. The cerebellum, pons veroli and the medulla oblongata. When we talk about cerebellum, cerebellum is also known as metencephalon. Metencephalon is the other name for cerebellum and we need to understand that it is the second largest part of the brain. 11% of the total brain is nothing but it is cerebellum. And after cerebrum, the one which occupies the maximum area is the cerebellum. Whenever we talk about cerebellum, it is present between the occipital region of cerebrum and the medulla oblongata. The hindbrain, which includes the cerebellum, it's made up of, so the cerebellum is made up of three lobes. So first we need to draw the diagram of cerebellum so that we can understand actually how cerebellum looks alike. So it is solid mass basically made up of three lobes. So the cerebellum consists of three parts. It is divided into three parts. The two parts can be called as lateral hemisphere and the middle one is called as median vermis. So we all need to draw a leaf like structure, kind of lotus leaf. And in that we give some fold. And in the center, we are going to draw the arbor vitae. This is the covering of the cerebellum and when we look at the section of the cerebellum inside we observe lots of folds and these folds basically they are called as arbor vitae and what we need to understand here 
the arbor vitae is also known as tree of life so what i'm drawing right now is nothing but it is the arbor vitae arbor vitae is called as tree of life there are three parts of the cerebellum so let's look at the first part the first part that you can see here is median vermis the middle part so let me give yellow color to it this middle part is called as median vermis and surrounding this is the arbor vitae or the tree of life and there are two lateral hemisphere so what we can see here that this part the pink colored part basically it is called as arbor vitae and the which is present in the two lateral hemisphere so let us take it in this way this area is the entire main area of the cerebellum and when we do the labeling of this what we are going to say the middle part becomes the median vermis so as far as cerebellum structure is concerned remember cerebellum consists of mainly three lobes the middle one is called as median vermis surrounding the median vermis there will be two lateral lobes and these two lateral lobes they are occupied by arbor vitae the arbor vitae is known as the tree of life when you look at the region of cerebellum again it has two region the outer region and the inner region the outer region is called as the cortex and the inner region is called as medulla so when you look at the cross section of the cerebellum the outer region is the cortex and inner region is the medulla the inner region is made up of white matter whereas the outer region is made up of gray matter so i can say that inner region is medulla which is white region or white matter and the outer region basically is the cortex which is a gray matter now whenever we talk about the functions of cerebellum so remember cerebellum is the most important part of the brain because it is responsible for coordination your movement of the body when you walk when you talk when you ride a bike when you ride a cycle all the coordination is provided because of cerebellum cerebellum gives you primary balancing ability if i am speaking my tongue my teeth and my jaw they are moving in coordination with each other it is only because of cerebellum an alcoholic person will not be able to talk fluently his voice will be totally distorted why because the cerebellum is not working at that time even the alcoholic person cannot walk properly why because the cerebellum is in the impact of alcohol so the primary center for controlling equilibrium is the cerebellum it is responsible for posture balance and orientation if you are able to stand straight walk straight it is only because of cerebellum it is the center for neurotransmitter activities like walking running speaking etc and you will be shocked to know that cerebellum is the negative part of the brain cerebrum i call it as positive part of the brain because anything that you do good it's because of cerebrum and the negative thing that you do it's purely because of cerebellum now the point here is what is positive and what is negative when i see 100 rupees note on the ground so i have two thoughts now one thought is i pick up that note and the second thought is i leave it there only so picking up is in the control of picking up is in the control of cerebellum leaving it as it is because it is not belonging to you it is because of cere bra so cerebellum is the most important part of the brain let's talk about the next important part of the midbrain that is called as pons veruli pons veruli is also known as myelinen cephalon why because it is going to form myelin it will extend medulla oblongata extends at the as the spinal cord so structure of pons veruli first let's look at the location it is present below the cerebrum 
in front of cerebellum and above medulla oblongata it has nerves basically so whenever we talk about structure it is with respect to position below the cerebrum in front of cerebellum and it is above the medulla oblongata and it consists of nerves which is going to bridge the cerebrum and the medulla oblongata it means if your cerebrum and medulla oblongata is connected it is purely because of the nerves that is present in the pons veruli in case of region here there will be two region present the outer region and the inner region outer region is composed of white matter whereas the inner region is composed of gray matter it is opposite of cerebrum in cerebrum we studied that the outer region is a gray matter and inner region is a white matter but in pons veruli outer is gray and uh, outer is white and inner is gray what are the functions of pons veruli pons veruli controls activities of the two cerebral hemisphere the right and the left nerves both the most important part is it has the reflex for breathing see whenever we talk about breathing we can control our breathing but only for few seconds or a maximum one or two minutes but this ability of controlling the breathing is in the control of pons veruli but after certain point of time the control of breathing shifts from pons veruli to medulla oblongata as a result we cannot hold our breath for longer period of time so this becomes the functions of pons veruli now coming to the most important part of the hind brain that is medulla oblongata medulla oblongata is also known as myelinen cephalon now medulla oblongata with respect to location it is present just below the pons veruli and a very important statement that is you need to understand is a sudden injury to medulla oblongata can lead to death of the person so sudden injury to medulla oblongata leads to death it means medulla is controlling some very important functions if that function stop you will die when we talk about the roof of medulla oblongata roof of medulla oblongata has posterior choroid plexus and what you need to understand that this choroid plexus is responsible for production of csf that is cerebro spinal fluid medulla oblongata is the most important part of the hind brain so whenever you talk about functions of medulla oblongata remember it controls all involuntary activity heartbeat respiration digestion it has the reflex for coughing sneezing swallowing secretion of glands vomiting yawning hiccuping etc there are many activities that you do and it is not in your control like for example coughing when you are sneezing it is not in your control swallowing of food is not in your control vomiting is not in your control even yawning and hiccups is not in your control as a result what happens if they stop it can lead to death even a respiratory system circulatory system digestive system each and every involuntary and important functions they are in the control of medulla oblongata that's why we say a sudden injury to medulla oblongata can lead to the death of the person let's talk about ventricles now ventricles are nothing but the cavities present in different part of the brain but before that we need to understand how many how many nerves arises from the medulla oblongata so there are eight pairs of nerves that arise from the medulla oblongata so cranial nerves there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves out of those 12 pairs of cranial nerves i can say that eight pairs of cranial nerves arises from the medulla oblongata itself when we talk about ventricles what are ventricles ventricles are nothing but these are the cavities present in different part of the brain now the point comes here how many ventricles we have So as far as mammals are concerned remember that mammals they have four ventricles so what are ventricles ventricles are nothing but 
the cavities that are present in different parts of the brain. Now the point here is how many ventricles are there? So the answer to this question is four. So let's explore the ventricles in detail. Now what is the role of these ventricles? The ventricles they are going to supply nourishment, they are going to supply all the nutrients, even they are going to supply blood to different parts of the brain. These ventricles helps in connecting all different parts of the brain. So whenever it comes to ventricles, we need to understand here that ventricles, they play a very important role and it is present in forebrain, midbrain, and also it is present in the hindbrain. And each ventricle is going to have certain role. So as far as ventricles are concerned, remember, ventricles are nothing but these are the cavities present in different part of the brain. How many ventricles are there? So we say there are four ventricles. First and second ventricles, they are parallel to each other. And these first and second ventricles, they are also called as lateral ventricle. So let's draw the diagram of ventricles. So this first and second ventricle together, then there is a duct that will connect to the third ventricle. Again, there is a duct and this duct is going to connect to the fourth ventricle. So this is how basically ventricles are connected. So let's understand ventricle one, two, three and four. So what I can say that first and second ventricle will together open in the third ventricle. The third ventricle will open in the fourth ventricle. So these ventricles, are of four types. The upper one, the first and the second ventricle that you can see, it is called as lateral ventricle. These lateral ventricles, they are also called as paracene. And where they are present, they are present in the cavity of cerebral hemisphere. The two cerebral hemisphere, the right and the left cerebral hemisphere, they have a cavity. So in the cavity of the cerebral hemisphere, you will get lateral ventricle. And finally, the first and the second ventricle, they are going to open into the third ventricle. So the opening that is there in the first and the second ventricle that opens in the third ventricle is known as foramen of Monroe. So this green colored duct basically that is going to provide entry for first and second ventricle into the third ventricle. It is foramen of Monroe. Third ventricle is called as diacy. So the opening is foramen of Monroe. Now when you say diacyl, diacyl is present in the cavity of diencephalon. What we need to understand next, the third ventricle that was there as a diacyl present in the cavity of diencephalon is going to open through a duct in the fourth ventricle. And when it opens into the fourth ventricle, it is through Iter, or even it is also known as aqueduct of Sylvius. The fourth ventricle is called as metacin. And this metacin basically is present in the cavity of medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, the one which controls all the involuntary functions. So remember, this is metacin and it is present in the cavity of medulla oblongata. And the duct through which the third ventricle opens into the fourth ventricle is known as iter or even it is called as aqueduct of Sylvius. So these are nothing but different openings that you see in the brain, which are known as ventricles. They are meant for supplying the nutrients, gases to the brain. At the same time, collect all the waste from the brain. So this is all what you should know about ventricles.